Now, here's the problem with physical security. If you don't do it right, the greater chance you run is loss, not theft. And we've seen this happen again and again. Uh, organizations or individuals who try to do these elaborate schemes with encryptions and USB drives and things like that, and then they forget the keys, or they lose their keys, or the backups get corrupted, and they lose thousands of coins. This has happened several times. Uh, one of the most popular videos out there is the WeUseCoins.com video, which explains Bitcoin very nicely. Read the history of how that organization worked. They raised 18,000 Bitcoins to produce that video back when it was you know, a dollar each. And then they spent 8,000 bitcoins to produce the video, and they had about 10 left over. And they encrypted it, and then they lost the keys, and they lost 10,000 bitcoins. Whoops! <laughs> so when you're doing physical security, one of the most important things is to try and balance um, the security you're applying with your own ability to recover. That you know, if you go and bury your money in the desert, and then you forget where you buried it. You lost your money, right? And so you're doing that essentially with digital keys. Um, one of the things I did with a safe paper wallet is print the keys twice. Very, very simple thing. So uh, the paper wallet, by the way, this is free software. I'm not selling the kits anymore. It's an it's open paper wallet. It's a community project. You can download it. You can use the software for free. Um, you can print these uh, wallets where it has uh, two copies of the keys. So you tear off a little stub, and then you put the stub in a secondary location. Now you have two chances of redeeming that key. So I have 99.9% .9 of all of my bitcoins on paper wallets. Half of those paper wallets are sitting in a safe deposit box. The other half of those paper wallets are sitting in a friend's safe deposit box at a different, uh, in a different location. So that even if one of my keys was compromised, I could then go and redeem them. The other thing you do is you diversify. You don't put it all on one paper wallet, right? because paper is paper. It burns, it gets wet, it gets acidy, it, get, it changes colors, it gets torn, whatever. Um, so one of the things that becomes difficult is you have to keep taking that one paper wallet and splitting it ten times every time the price rises. Right? And, and then you end up, uh, as I have, with hundreds of paper wallets with very, very small amounts on them. And then the management of those gets very difficult. So this is not easy stuff to do, but it's better than putting it online. Um, one of the most interesting developments in that space is the development of tamper-proof hardware wallets. Things like the Trezor, things like the um, uh, I can't remember what it's called, a little printer that does, safe, uh, that does paper wallets. Piper, Piper thank you. Uh, so Piper, Trezor, and various other solutions like that are coming out. If you have a hardware device that is designed to do one thing and one thing only, and that's to verify and sign transactions and maintain the security of the keys, then you can do biometrics. You can do um, pin security, and you can put it in a tamper-proof enclosure. And because that thing is not a general-purpose computing device, it has a much, much smaller exposure surface, so it can't be hacked. Right? And so we're going to see the development of those things. We can't just put Bitcoin on mobile devices, on laptops, and expect it to still be there in the morning. Um, one of the biggest things you can do personally today is immediately implement two-factor authentication on any system that you use that stores Bitcoin. Two-factor authentication is the following. Um, most systems are secured by one factor. That's a password, something you know. Uh, you can use other factors, something you have or something you are. Something you are is, for example, the iPhone fingerprint scanner. So it uses an additional factor of authentication, which is your fingerprint, something you are, in addition with something you know, a PIN number, to provide two factors before you can log in. Um, a way to do this online is to download a simple application like Google Authenticator or One-Time Password Generator. What this does is it, it generates a new number, a six-digit number, every 30 seconds. And when you go to log into your online wallet, you have to enter your username. You have to enter your extremely complex, not based on words, not even Klingon words, uh, <laughs> random password that you very carefully generated with software because you don't trust yourself to just generate it from your head. I assume everybody's already doing that. I know in fact for a fact that no one is, but um, please do. And then on top of that, you have to provide a second factor, which is the six-digit number. Now that means that someone who's compromised you not only has to either install a keylogger and capture your primary password, they then have to steal your phone. Uh, that provides a much, much higher level of security. So I feel confident leaving, you know, I don't know, five, ten bitcoins at most on an online wallet 
and then uh, protecting that with two-factor authentication, especially if the online wallet actually doesn't store the keys, or they, they store the keys in an encrypted form that's only decrypted by your browser. Blockchain Info does this, uh, CryptoKit does this, a number of other uh, software wallets do this. So, uh, first thing you do when you get home, change your password to something that's actually strong. 16 characters randomly generated from software. Add two-factor authentication. If you don't have a smartphone to download the software, you can do two-factor authentication with SMS. Where when you try to log in, it sends you a little code on SMS, and you have to enter that as well. Again, that means your phone is the second factor. Um, and then we're going to have to invent a lot more. But, it, but we have programmable money, so we can unleash a whole torrent of innovation on how to secure this stuff. Okay, that, sorry that was a bit of a long answer, but this is a really important topic because we're going to see a lot of theft and a lot of loss in the next uh, couple of years until we fix this. <coughs>